Hi creatives, it's KM and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be giving you 10 ideas for spring themes that you can use in your bullet journal, sketchbook, art journal or whatever system it is that you like to use. The first theme on the list is Mayfair. On the left you can see a title illustration where I've created an outdoor scene with a maypole and some little event tents. Then on the right I've demonstrated some bunting style fonts. The Mayfair theme with the maypole then really suits ribbons and ribbon banners, which are actually super easy to draw as I will show you now. So to create the ribbon banner I'm first drawing three rectangles with the centre one slightly larger than the others. Using diagonal lines I'm then connecting them together, working from the corners of the rectangles to create the appearance of one flowing ribbon. For a last touch of detail I'm adding in the ends of the ribbon, making sure to draw them at the same angle as the diagonal lines we drew earlier. If you want to draw a quick ribbon for borders or detail, simply draw any wiggly line and connect the inside of one curve to the outside of the other. Using this technique, you can then create an entire maypole. I've drawn a basic outline of the pole in pencil first, and then I'm drawing a ribbon, alternating each loop over and under the pole. You can then continue in this way, building up more ribbons to easily create a drawing that can look quite complicated. After that, you can then go back in and draw in the sections of the pole that aren't covered by a ribbon. Of course, adding colour is going to bring these drawings to life. The next theme is Blossom. For the main illustration, I've created a cherry blossom forest with a bench and watercolour and acrylic. The delicacy of a blossom theme pairs really nicely with delicate calligraphy style fonts, and if you want a simple drawing to do, it can be really lovely to draw a blossom up close. To create the blossom trees, I first created a basic tree trunk in black watercolour. I'm just doing this off the top of my head by creating a mass of quick, loose brush strokes and connecting them together into a solid base. To create the blossom, I'm simply layering small dots of white and various shades of pink over the top of the branches. I'm also dotting some beneath the tree to create the impression of piles of falling blossom. For an up-close blossom, the key is to create five petals slightly circular in shape. I'm then applying a general base wash in a light pink watercolour and blending a darker shade into the centre of the petals. And then adding a darker patch again into the very centre of the flower. For the filaments of the flower I'm using a purple shade and drawing the lines out from the centre of the flower. And then adding dots of orange to each of these for the pollen and bringing this shade into the centre flower to round the whole thing off a bit more. To add some depth I'm using a white chalk marker to add highlights to the filaments as well as to the tips of each petal. And if you're interested by the way I'm going to leave all the links to the supplies I use in the description. To finish this off I'm doing some quick cross hatching to add in depth to the centre of the blossom. The next theme I've chosen is based all around the sky. I've created an illustration of a girl holding a whole bunch of kites. This also actually lends itself really well to a font style as you can write the words into the string of the kite. For quick simple illustrations you can then do clouds and paper aeroplanes. To start off I'm drawing an outline of a kite. Then in one swift movement I'm writing the word spring into the string of the kite. The key here is to work in one long movement. To create a paper aeroplane, first draw a V with two little horizontal lines coming into the centre. You can then connect the ends of these horizontal lines into the centre of the V. I'm then adding another triangle into the centre and shading this to give it some depth. The next theme I've chosen is gardening. So you can see here on the left hand side I've created a little illustration of a small greenhouse filled with a variety of potted plants. I've then created a graphic style font, then for the doodles I've created a close up of one of the plants in the greenhouse and a little gnome. To create this font I'm first starting by drawing out a pencil outline of the letter which I wish to draw. After that I'm then drawing the leaves over the top. I can then adjust the outline of the letter so that it moves around the outside of these leaves. I'm adding a pop of colour by adding some bright green to the letter and some yellow to the leaves. I'm then going around the outside of the entire letter and the leaves and to create some depth on the right hand side of the letter I'm adding a drop shadow. For the illustration I'm going to quickly show you how to draw a simple rose. The key here is to work in a circular motion making sure each petal overlaps the other one and then applying a general base coat of crimson to all of the petals. On the side of the petal closest to the centre I'm then adding a shade of purple. This should give the petals some depth and make them look more three dimensional. I'm then going in with my chalk marker once again to add some highlights to the tips of the petal. I'm then using a black fine liner to add some depth to the centre of each petal. And that's the garden thing. 
The next theme might be one of my favourites, and this is wildflowers. For the title page illustration, I've collected all of these flowers into a bunch. For the font style, I've created letters out of tiny, tiny roses. And then for the illustrations, this is a pretty easy one to do, as you can then just draw each of those flowers as a close-up. To begin drawing the font, I began by just drawing in pencil the outline of the letter. And then going over the top and drawing roses. To create the roses, I'm not doing anything fancy like I did in the last spread, I'm just drawing tiny little swirls. They end up looking like roses from a distance. To add colour, I'm then adding red to some of the roses, purple to some of the others, and an orangey pink tone to the rest. For the daffodils, we're going to use five petals, but instead we're going to be creating teardrop shaped ones. I've then added some watercolour with a darker shade of yellow at the centre to create the trumpet. I've then used my chalk marker to create some highlights and I'm using a fine liner to create some detail. For bluebells, the key is to create them all along one stem. To add colour, I'm first doing a quick layer of bright blue and adding in a hint of purple, as I find bluebells actually often look more purple than they do blue despite their name. Once again, I'm using my chalk marker to add highlight and my black fine liner to add some outline and depth. To draw a fern, I first create a centre stroke and then pairs of stems coming off of this, growing smaller as we go towards a tip. In the same way, I'm then creating leaves along each of these stems, getting smaller as we go towards the tip, and then painting these in in a cool blue-toned green. To show how detailed the ferns are, I'm working in with my chalk marker and fine liner to highlight each individual leaf. To create the heather, we're going to work in a similar way to how we work to create the blossom for the trees. I'm dabbing dots of pink watercolour layering them up to create some depth and tone, and then going over the top in loose scribbles of fine liner. To create a thistle, I'm beginning by creating a bumpy oval in the centre, and then working out for this, creating five petals, except these are going to be jagged and spiky. I've then added some colour using blues and blue-toned greens. I incorporated some of these flowers into my March plan with me, if you haven't seen it already, so I'm going to link that below so you can see how it could work in a full bullet journal spread. The next theme I've chosen is birdhouses. For the main illustration, I've created a cluster of birdhouses at different heights. For the font style, I've created some calligraphy, with little birds coming off of each of the flicks. And although this might seem like an obvious choice, for my illustration, I've chosen to create a small bird. One of the things I've learned about drawing these birdhouses is that they look way better if you actually do it with a ruler. I know that sounds silly, but I often try and draw straight lines freehand, and I found when I put the effort in to make sure my angles are right and draw these lines properly, it does add a sense of finesse, and the whole thing looks a lot sharper and more refined. I'm not sure finesse quite describes my art style, but there you go. That's the word I went for. Now, I could have just drawn these birdhouses in various shades of brown, but I thought that might look quite monotone and quite boring, so I've tried to work in a pastel colour scheme and then using my chalk marker to add some highlights and going over everything in a thick black fine liner to add a graphic look. This technique I'm using here is called cross hatching. It's basically where you layer diagonal lines to create a hatched look. And it's quite a quick, easy way of creating some depth and some texture to your drawing. The next theme I've chosen is butterflies. For my title illustration, I've created a wreath of butterflies. The delicacy of this look really suits calligraphy, so I've created an open calligraphy, and then for the little individual illustrations, you can draw the butterflies on their own along with some leaves. I'm now going to show you three easy butterfly styles. One of the things that I like to do to add variation to my butterflies is not to draw all of them with four wings, but actually to draw some of them with two. To add some variation to the two wing shape, I've created a more delicate, flowy style and a more structured, straight style. And then going back into these outlines and adding some detail for the pattern work for each of the butterflies. Now, to be completely honest, you can just make this up, but I find it a lot easier by going on Google and looking at real life images of butterflies and working off of that to help it look a little bit more realistic. To start adding colour, the key I found is to work in a natural colour palette. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, bright blue probably isn't the most natural of colours, but actually, if you look at butterflies, you'll find they come in quite a wide variety of colours. By natural, I tend to mean working in blues and browns and oranges, rather than working in, say, neon pink. Like I've done before, I'm using my chalk marker to add highlights and using a black fine liner to add outlines to create a graphic look and also to add more detail. For the open calligraphy look, I first begin by just drawing an outline of a letter. 
I then go back in and thicken the vertical sections of the lines. The next spring theme I've chosen to show you is pond life. On the left hand side you can see the illustration that I've created, which shows a frog sitting on some lily pads with a lotus. On the right hand side you can then see a font style that I've created, which shows the letters reflected into a pool of water. A quick and simple illustration to then do to fill up other space is to draw the lotus. To create the font style I'm first laying down a gradient of watercolour, making sure there's more watercolour at the top and tipping it up so it runs down the page. Using straight edged structural letters, I'm drawing these out along the top of the watercolour gradient, making sure they don't dip into the actual watercolour itself. To create the reflection, I'm then creating a mirror image connected to each of these letters underneath. I'm drawing each of these letters in a wobbly, wiggly format to look like the ripples of actual water. To create the lotus, the technique is to work out from the centre. I've drawn a circle and I'm working out in layers of petals. I'm then going over everything in a quick base coat of pink. To add some more realism to the lotus, I'm adding a darker shade along the tips of each of the petals. And now last but not least, you know the drill. To finish it all off, I'm using my chalk marker to add highlights and my fine liner to add depth. The penultimate theme I'm going to be showing you is eggs. And I'm going to class it up a bit so it's not just the typical Easter eggs and instead we're going to be doing Fabergé. On the left hand side you can see I've created an illustration of a cluster of Fabergé eggs. On the right hand side I've created a metallic font with a drop shadow and some quick doodle illustrations can be strings of beads and piles of gems. Now I'm not going to show you how to paint the eggs because it's fairly straightforward but I'm just going to give you some quick rough ideas of pattern work that you can do on top. For example you could use a grid, scalloped lines, various different sizes of polka dots, you could also use something a little bit more detailed like florals or concentric circles. Very quickly, I'm just going to show you how to do an outline of a gem. For the top, I'm just going to draw a bottomless trapezium and connect the corners down into a point. I'm then going back and connecting those two corners with three little lines. I've then drawn another trapezium style shape off the top and connected this down to the centre line. And finally, the last theme of the video that I'm going to show you is sunset. On the left, I've created an illustration of a sun rising over some mountains. On the right hand side, I've used a Broadway style font. And then I've added in some little illustrations of a sun and a moon. To create the illustration, I first used my compass to create a circle. I then drew out my illustration outline in pencil. To create the background, I blended blue and orange watercolour together to create a gradient that looked like a sunset. I then added in a matching blue shade to one of the three sides of my mountains. Lastly, I'm finishing off the watercolour with a pop of bright yellow for the sun. On the left hand side of my mountains, to show the contour, I've added in some silver metallic pen. I'm then going around the full outline of my illustration in black fine liner to create a graphic look. Then to add some texture to the final panel of the mountains, I'm creating a pattern of closely spaced horizontal lines. Thank you so much for watching this video and please tell me in the comments what your favourite theme was. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe as I post regular creative journal and sketchbook inspiration. Until I see you again, keep creative.